All right, hello and welcome to the DevStream 87 Breakdown. Uh, so, today, this is coming out a little late, sorry about that. Uh, I was on the second stream podcast today, which is the podcast that uh, DE does, uh, usually after every dev stream. Uh, so, that will be out later, whenever that's available, I'll link it down below, and I'll probably throw up another video whenever it goes available to let everyone know where to listen to it. Um, uh, so basically, let's let's get started. Uh, so first of all, we saw this. This is a carrier sentient. Basically, this, as you can see here, has little um, the trooper units for the uh, sentients attached to it, and they drop down and will come and fight you. Uh, and as they talked about, we'll have a, another functionality, which is the energy that is normally dropped by sentients whenever they die uh, will be sucked into this thing if it's still alive, and it will reformulate the sentients. So. That's a really interesting new enemy for us to have, uh, and my hope is that it doesn't have all of the materials we might need to make that big sentient arm cannon or whatnot, because it's probably going to be a rare spawn, because it's I'm, I'm imagining it's only on like outdoor tiles where this thing could even be able to spawn, because it looks pretty big. So, uh, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. I definitely want to fight it, because it seems like it will be fun. Uh, and then, besides that, we got an update on the Nefania boss fight. Uh, basically, this keeps getting pushed back because uh, other things keep happening, uh, which is fine. But we got this, uh, and it is still on the way. So, we can expect that this year, I think? Uh, to be fair, though, the things that this keeps getting pushed back for are probably more important than the actual boss fight itself. Uh, at least as it stands right now. Uh, and then we got... The Ambulos rework, which with the Ambulos rework, there are a couple things with that. We have his new look, um, and this boss fight is going to be treated kind of like the Raptor boss fight, where there's going to be multiple Ambulos that you're going to have to deal with, uh, and it will have to do with this thing, uh, which is the Corpus Carrier. Uh, so this is going to be ships that you're basically going to have to stop the Ambulos from getting onto to be like transported to other facilities or whatnot. So it should be a kind of weird boss fight that uh, should be quite a bit of fun. Uh, I imagine that will be significantly improved, and I do really, really like this new Ambulos design, actually. It's pretty nice. Um, besides that, though, they talked a little bit about the Golden Maw being added back in. Uh, in the Golden Maw, for those of you that do not remember what that's called, it uh, is the worm-type unit that you can control during the War Within. Uh, this was some concept stuff shown about, like, maybe it's like an emplacement in the void somehow that you could then get into. Um, it's interesting, and I don't know... It'll, it'll be interesting to see what they do with the operators in the future and how much they're putting them into levels for things that they can participate in. Um, but the Golden Maw thing was really, really fun, especially if you go back and replay The War Within. Uh, if you played it on release, like, in the first couple hours of that coming out... It was kind of weird and didn't like flow super, super well. But if you go back and play it now, all the little buggy things have been taken care of. So the controls for it are really cool. And that thing moves totally different from anything else we uh, have had control of in the past. So I would suggest replaying The War Within if you played it on like direct day of release beforehand. Because it's pretty rad. Uh, besides that, uh, we got some news about raids and trials and... They were talked about in a more forthcoming, not forthcoming, an upcoming way, I suppose, in that raids, like more raids, seem like they're not entirely kind of off the table as they were before, which means maybe hopefully we'll see one this year. I would know I would very much enjoy that. Um, and then they talked a little bit about the bug fixing and the exploit fixing that they are doing in the raids where they are trying to make it so that they're fixing the exploits and that you can't, like, just skip parts of the raids, but also trying to fix the bugs that come along with that and trying to keep that in balance. Because for those of you that do not know, uh, for a while there, Jordis Verdict, only the host pretty much could destroy the nerves, and that was that's some bad business to having to do with them fixing the skips with the nerves as you um, would do beforehand with, like, Volt and stuff. So that will hopefully continue to go smoother in the future and not have fixes to exploits create more larger progression blocking bugs because uh, that's never any good uh, and then we got some Eximus changes so here's the deal with Eximus changes they showed a infested not that that's a different thing they showed an infested that has these weak points and 
I'm worried about this. The weak points are these, this here, and this here. Uh, I'm worried about these a little bit because the, the big thing I'm worried about is if there are too many Xmas with these. Like, if there are more than, say, five of these Xmas on a map at once that have these weak points, then I think it's going to be really not fun. Um, but if the rewards are there to make in fact like uh any Xmas that do have these points that require you to do more to kill them if they add in those rewards to make them more worth it which a lot of this stuff i talked about on the second stream podcast and like we talked a lot about like making rewards worth it versus like what you're having to do to kill enemies um which might entail these enemies getting like relic drops like when you kill an enemy that has these things they drop relics like making the rewards worth it uh for those like slightly increased difficulty of the enemies uh with the context of what's talked about in the second stream podcast um i think these can potentially be a really good addition to the game uh in the same way that i think nullifiers after their change are going to be like a really well-rounded fun enemy uh, i think that these enemies are probably going to come in not be great and then eventually get to the point where they're like good have good rewards you want to see them you want to kill them uh, and are not like overwhelming and like shitty to fight because that would be the thing that obviously would want to be avoided um but the basic gist of it is that these have potential and this is not inherently a bad way to design an enemy because obviously many other video games have done this and it has worked um also well uh, now that's stuff I talked about in the podcast that's not really related. Uh, but yeah, uh, that can potentially work. I think there's, I think it can be good. It's just a really hard balance to strike. Uh, and then moving on. Uh, oh, but for, you know, I didn't make a note of this. Uh, we have this new enemy, not that. This new enemy, or that's just a regular corpus sniper who was attached to. Uh, this thing on the floor here, the little like square, will spawn new little um, units for the corpus that are akin to the rollers from the grenier. So we'll have like a ground-based fast enemy that we'll have to take care of. Uh, that seems pretty nice. The concept art looked all right. And on stream, they showed it as mini Zanukas, which is not what it's going to be. Uh, but it was kind of fun. Um, but yeah, that should be a good addition to the corpus to make them a little weirder. Having like a deployable that's like constantly making little enemies could be interesting. Um, but yeah, that, that seems like it'll, so the, the issue that I have with that is that that's a sniper crewman and sniper crewmen are pretty rare. So it might not make much of a difference at all for the corpus overall. Uh, but that might get put on a different unit that we might see a little more. Uh, so yeah, that's what that is. And then we show the weak points. Okay. Moving on, we've got a new endless mission type called Defector Rescue. Uh, and basically, they showed a little bit of this. What you're doing is you're taking defectors that are trapped by the infested or whatnot, uh, leading them through a level, charging up some stations to heal them as they move through the level, and then getting them to an extraction zone. And this will expand the level as you go longer and longer. So the rescue targets have to go farther and farther, but you get better rewards as the chain of rooms you have to go through becomes larger uh, or at least that's the idea of it so that seems really cool and it's going to be a mini event to kind of introduce the game mode uh coming up here soon on pc uh, i think the one potential problem with that is that the pathing on the ai is going to be really important to get right on that so that they're not just like bumbling about and wasting time uh but the potential for that to be a really good mission and have like a really good like rate of rewards for you like moving through rooms like making sure enemies are taken care of protecting a hostage as they're like actually going towards an objective or not a hostage a rescue target as they're actually going towards an objective there's some cool stuff around that and i, I think it can be done really well the one thing that i'm worried about is kind of the thing that i think is a little bit wrong with excavation right now in that the if I'm remembering correctly, I haven't done excavation in actually quite a while. It's, it's probably been like a couple weeks since I've done an excavation, actually, which is strange. Um, but basically, in excavation, if I'm remembering, if I'm remembering correctly, the excavators don't scale, and that's a problem. If the health of the rescue targets don't scale with the enemies, so that you're actually having a survivable target that you're rescuing, uh, that could be really shitty. 
but otherwise it should be good i i have i have hopes for that i think it'll be a nice additional game mode i mean the last game mode we got i think i might be in the minority but i enjoyed it so that'll be nice and then finally we got some detailing on the sort of nemesis type system that got converted into this system the kingpin system uh so basically what's gonna happen here is you'll have a faction lead uh a kingpin that is of a faction, like a Grenier one, a Corpus one, an infested one, that will have like a hierarchy that you're hunting down through multiple enemy cells. And it looks kind of like this. Uh, this is just a mock-up. Uh, but basically, you're doing these missions to get down to your goal or, or down and then up. It's actually not 100% clear, like if you completed the bottom one, uh, which like the check mark indicates that, but it doesn't go anywhere up top. So it's a little weird. But basically... You're going to have branching decisions as a clan, and as you complete missions, then you will progress through, and there will be rewards tied to that, and things of that nature, basically. So, that brings me to the thing I'm worried about with this, which is this right here. One moment. This. This right here. That's 6 out of 42. So, depending on the size of the clan, that's one node on like a potential like grid of nodes that you would have to do. If that's for the smallest size clan, that is like probably too many missions. Um, unless you're having people split up, which would probably be less fun. Um, but for the for the smallest tier clan, I think 42 is maybe a little high. Because you can't count on all of those people being active. So it's not you're doing four missions for every person in the clan. It's more than that in general. If that's the smallest tier clan. But that is just a mock-up, so... Mockups are what they are, um, and on the second stream, we kind of go pretty in-depth on making clan rewards achievable in a real way for clans that aren't super active, uh, so it sounds like we will probably, probably not going to get a HEMA situation with how these things are going to work, um, so I, I remain hopeful that that will be the case, because having a system that looks really cool, uh, be in the way of the HEMA where it's not super achievable for like very, very small clans uh, in like a reasonable manner um, would be really unfortunate because it seems awesome. I know for me personally, I'm very excited for this system because I have a very active clan and we can all participate in it and just blow through it and get cool rewards. Um, so yeah, I think it'll be, it'll probably be really fun when it comes out. I'm actually quite looking forward to it. Uh, and then besides that, uh, we are. We already went over the Corpus dropship whenever we talked about Ambulos, but there it is again. Uh, it's a cool design. Not much to be said about that. I think we've seen one of these docked somewhere before in a level. I could be wrong about that. Hmm. But yeah, and then the final thing uh, is just Bard Frame, uh, which looks like it's coming along fucking great. They just took Bard, threw powers down. No context on what those powers are doing besides they look dope. Uh, and music happened, and there was a dancing bard frame on screen, and I'm okay with everything that I saw with that. It looks fucking cool. I hope it's a support where, like, you just fucking... Like, if you just have a bard, and she's just hanging out in the back, breaking it down, I'm okay with that. It seems like a really cool thing um, that will probably get some people uh, into a support. Hopefully it's a support. I'm guessing that it's going to be a support-type class, mostly. Um it should be really cool. Uh, and then one final thing that is not on these notes because I talked, I asked about it during the second stream podcast. Uh, I asked about a detail on the Limbo rework that I was very, very curious about, which is what does Limbo's dodge look like? Because in my head, in my head, it's like a Mega Man X dash where you're going through the rift very quickly and like doing like sick air dash shit. Apparently, yes, it is that. So. Man, things are looking up real high for that Limbo rework just based on that one thing and some of the other things we've heard around that where, like, maybe he can stop time for all enemies that are in the Rift. All those things are, are, are around that that are not confirmed and, like, his dash being a really dope air dash that, like, takes you a good distance. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that Limbo rework because I get a feeling it's going to be real good. And at the very least, it sounds really fun, so... At least we'll have that. Fun frames are kind of fine, too. Hopefully he's, he's good. Good and fun is, of course, the ideal, though. Uh, but, yeah. That's, uh... That's Devstream 87. 
and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Also, um, I will be streaming uh, after this video goes up, probably as soon as I can. The stream will be starting, so come hang out. We're going to do raid prep. Uh, if you don't have your Jordis injector and you want to get it, head on over. Uh, and we're, yeah, going to do that stuff. Probably maybe some Arcwing leveling in there, you know, whatever we happen to get into. Uh, and then I'm probably going to play uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands later on. The beta just opened up. So, yeah, me and Frozen Paws might team up and do some of that stuff. But yeah. See you guys then.